Hello, good morning, and welcome to my channel, Go Explore Greece. I'm Ian, and have I got an absolutely fun-packed filled walking tour with me this morning. We begin right behind me at the famous Arch of Hadrian, and we end it right across the way at Monasteraki Square. In between, as I said, I'm going to show you loads of different things, including a sneak preview of the Temple of Olympian Zeus, I'll then go on and point out some of the best places to shop, eat and drink, including one of the best to eat Luca Mathes, traditionally deep fried Greek donuts, oh, and also a world famous bar, which we should be able to go in and film. I'll also point out the two best entrances to the Acropolis Museum and the Acropolis of Athens. We'll then go through the famous Plaka neighborhood, also known as the neighborhood of gods, where I'll show you loads of ancient sites, including a 2,000 year old marketplace, the oldest weather station in the world, and a 20 foot high marble statue given just for winning an award for singing a song. And as I said, we'll end it in Monasteraki. So there's a lot to do, so go and look for your best toga, tie up your sandals, and let's go explore Greece. Okay, well, obviously right in front of us is the Arch of Hadrian. Now, some of you might be wondering, who's this Adrian bloke, and why does he get an arch? Well, he was a Roman emperor for start, and he loved Athens so much, he decided to have the arch built. Built more than 1800 years ago, it's about 18 meters high, and about 12 meters wide, and is made of the exact same marble as the Parthenon. There's two inscriptions either side of the arch. First one says, this is Athens, the ancient city of Theseus. And on the other side, it says, this is the city of Hadrian, and not of Theseus. Next up on our historical hit parade is the Temple of Olympian Zeus. It's a structure that screams, certainly in its heyday, go big or go home. Seriously though, the ancient Greeks didn't do things by halves when it came to their gods. As the name suggests, it was dedicated to Zeus. He was the big boss of the Greek gods, ruler of the skies, and also he actually had a bit of a temper. Lightning bolts were his weapon of choice. Construction of the place kicked off in the 6th century BC, but here's the juicy bit. It wasn't finished until the reign of Hadrian, and that's nearly 700 years later. Now that's what you call a project overrun. When it was completed, the temple had a whopping 104 columns, and each of them stood 17 meters tall. Obviously today, there's far less. There's only 15, I think, and there's a 16th line on the ground. There's a link in the description to my website if you want to learn more. I've also put a couple of links to get the best and cheapest tickets, because believe you me, this place gets busy very, very quick.
just on the left there, that's the monument to a very famous Greek person, very well known, Melina Makouri. Uh, she was an actress, singer, and a larger-than-life politician. And as a politician, she fought tooth and nail for the return of the Parthenon marbles. And there's some of Athens' finest up ahead, doing what they do most of the time, checking their phones. Just coming up now in front of us, that's the shop called Luca Mathers. It takes its name from the delicacy it serves. And it's a Greek tradition that's been causing, I guess, sticky fingers and satisfied smiles for centuries. Try to imagine little golden donut balls, crispy on the outside, fluffy on the inside, and then lovingly bathed in sweet syrup, honey, or chocolate. I want to show you this, even though it's a hotel. It's not that well known, even though it's a five star. It's the Athens Was Hotel, and it's rather special. It's a boutique hotel. It's got one of the best rooftop restaurants and bars in Athens, and also amazing views of the Acropolis, including the Parthenon. No, it's, it's okay, it's okay. I've got to I've, I've put a link to the hotel in the description below because I often get some good offers. Now, right in front of us, that's the statue of Ioannis Matrianis. He was born in 1797 and he came from very humble beginnings. And at seven, unfortunately, he witnessed his father's death. Now, not much older than 14, he then joined up to fight the Greek War of Independence. And 13 years later, at 27, he became a general. Okay, before we go through the heart of Plaka, I just want to do a quick detour to point out the best entrances to get to the Acropolis of Athens and the Acropolis Museum. And this is the best entrance for the Acropolis of Athens. Right here is the one where you get to see everything. Now, like the Acropolis Museum, it gets very busy, in fact, busier. Now, when you get to the entrance here, there's in essence two sections. The first one is for those who have bought their tickets online, and then the other one who are gonna buy them from the ticket kiosk. When the place opens, the ones who have bought their tickets online first, they get let through first. The ones on the right who haven't bought their tickets, they have to wait a minimum 15 to 20 minutes before the kiosk opens. I've put a few links in the description below, but honestly, I do recommend you get them online because you do get priority entrance 
into the Acropolis. Just coming up on the left there, that's the Acropolis Museum. Yes, yes, that's a color. Now, believe me when I say this, the Acropolis Museum gets extremely busy very, very quickly. Good piece of advice here is to buy your tickets online. And I've put a couple of links below in the description that should enable you to get the best deals possible. There's a little bonus there view of the Acropolis of Athens. Okay then, let's um, let's continue our walking tour. Next stop, coming up on the left, is the famous Placken neighborhood. It's also known by locals as the neighborhood of the gods. Why? I suppose because it's just a stone's throw away from the Acropolis, really. Now, walking through Placca, and it is quite a big area, it's almost like wandering through a live museum. But instead of do not touch signs, you're invited to immerse yourself completely. There is so much, I mean, besides the shops and places to eat and drink, there's what's known as like a, not a secret place, but not that well known. It's almost an island village in the heart of the city. And that's called Anafiotika. It's an absolutely lovely place. It's almost as if you've been magically transported to the Cyclades. And I put a link in the description, specifically a walking tour around it. I do recommend you have a look at it. As I said, there's lots of shops here and there are some great places to eat and drink, including a world famous bar I'm going to show you. And we'll also should be able to go inside for a look. And there's also a few ancient sites as well, including a 20 foot high marble trophy made for just winning a music competition.
Here's that 20 foot high marble monument for winning a competition I mentioned earlier. It's called the Koryagic Monument of Lysicrates. Back in the day of ancient Athens, when it was, I suppose, the Broadway of the ancient world, theatrical performances were like the blockbuster hits of the time. Unlike today's movie producers, the sponsors, or the Koraji of these plays, competed fiercely, not just for the applause of the audience, but for tropes. Now some of you might be wondering, why on earth go to all the trouble just for a trophy? Well, imagine today's Oscars mixed with bragging rights. Because these competitions back then were not just entertainment. They were deeply woven into the fabric of Athenian democracy and pride. In other words, the monument served as a permanent Instagram filter. Now, that world famous bar I mentioned earlier, coming up to it now on the right, is Bretos. I'll stick the link in the description below. Essentially, it opened in 1909, and it's the oldest distillery in Athens. Going inside, which we'll see, is like stepping into a kaleidoscope of colors. Let's see if the owner will let us inside. Okay? Signal me, but I'm not for the cookies, sir. If I stop for a leg.
Okay folks, next stop on our little Athenian adventure is a stop that's bound to blow you away. Or, to be honest more accurately, tell you which way the wind's blowing. Let me explain. That there, that's the Tower of the Winds, also known as the Horologion of Andronikos Serestis. Built around the first century BC, and obviously long before today's weather apps, it's the world's oldest weather station. It's located in the ancient Roman Agora, and the structure is almost like a Swiss army knife of ancient times. Now by that I mean part sundial, part weather vane, part water clock, which was actually powered by water coming from the Acropolis. I'll put links below to more info on it, including the location, and also where to find the best tickets.
What we're walking alongside here now, that's the Roman Forum of Athens. The arch coming up with four columns, that's known as the Gate of Athena, who's the patron goddess of Athens. What's interesting is the Forum was actually founded by Julius Caesar and Augustus. Yeah. This was the place to be if you were anyone in Athens. It was right here that the Romans introduced the Athenians to the joys of shopping malls with a marketplace. That's right, it was essentially a shopping mall and a marketplace. Not bad, eh? Now I've stuck links below to if you want to learn more about it and also as well how to get tickets online.
<laughs> now this structure we're walking up to, imagine if Amazon Kindle had an ancient Greek ancestor. Well, you get something a bit like what's in front of us, Hadrian's Library. It was built in 132 AD. It was essentially the ancient world's version of the ultimate chill-out zone for intellectuals. It had rows of papyrus scrolls, because back then scrolling had a whole different meaning, obviously. There was also a courtyard, galleries, and even a reading room. But over the centuries, it's also been used in other things. It's been used as a fortress, a shelter, and even a venue for theatrical performances. And here we are, folks, at the grand finale of our Athenian escapade, Monasteraki Square. Now the word Monasteraki essentially means little monastery. And it owes its name to that church up in front of us. Yeah. You see, Monasteraki Square isn't just a square. It's, it's where street food vendors, performers, shops, cafes, bars, restaurants, tourists and locals all come together. It gets very busy during late afternoon and it gets even busier at night. Now that's the church I mentioned earlier with a really interesting fact about it. It's called the Church of uh, Panatanasa. It dates back to the 10th century. Its name, Panatanasa, translates to Queen of All, and it really refers to the Virgin Mary. But what's cool about this church is you can notice there, it seems to be built below ground level. It's not on the same level. Can you see there? Well, it wasn't built below the level that we're on. This happened because everything around it over hundreds and hundreds of years was built up. Well, that's the end of the guided walking tour with me. I really hope you enjoyed it. As I promised, it was certainly a fun-filled, packed adventure, wasn't it? We saw so many things, including the best places to eat Luca Mathes. Remember, those are those traditional Greek deep-fried donuts. In the meantime, if you want to see more about Greece, you're welcome to look at my other videos, and you're also welcome to subscribe to my channel. And don't forget, click the reminder button. Until then, the best thing to do is go explore Greece.